Hello, good evening. Welcome to News at 10. I'm Stephen Enti. We're live on Facebook, uh, TV3, GH and uh, DSTV channel 279. Uh, up next are uh, the major news highlights for the day. President Kufuado has appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police James Opon Bueno as the acting IGP. The Deputy Inspector General of Police, uh, James Opon Bueno, uh, takes over from David Atante Pietu, who is proceeding on leave uh, with uh, proceeding on leave with immediate effect. James Opon Bueno is taking over from the IGP who was to retire on August uh, 14. Meanwhile, the former Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietu, and the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department, Mami Tiwa Ado Dankwa, have for the third time failed to appear in court. The two were expected to respond to contempt charges against them over their refusal to comply with a bail order for Gregory Afoko. And also tonight, the police ID has concluded investigations into former secretary to the Inter-Ministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Charles Bissell, uh, on corruption charges. The police ID conducted a probe into Tiger IPI's allegations against the former presidential staffer. Also tonight, the Ministry of Education says it will not post teachers who have failed to write their licensure examinations in September this year. Public Relations Officer of the Ministry, Kwesi Obing Fosu, told my colleague Daniel Opoku the move is to ensure that teachers in the education sector are properly recognized in the profession. Those are our major news highlights. I remember we're streaming live on Facebook. You can follow us there as well as on 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story tonight. The police CID has concluded investigations into former secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Charles Cromwell Bissu, on corruption charges. The police CID conducted the probe into Tiger IPI's allegations against the former presidential staffer. Charles Bissu was accused by Anas Arimeyao announced on the Tiger IPI team of circumventing the law to grant mining licenses to QRR uh, resources enterprise to engage in small-scale mining uh, while a ban on same was enforced. Charles Bissu subsequently stepped aside as the secretary to the committee to allow for investigations into the Imata. The CID report said that the documentary, which shows Bissu taking money from undercover reporters, was not a true reflection of what transpired between uh, Bissu and the assigns of the said QRR resources enterprise. The report further stated that Anas Arimiyao Anas failed to cooperate with the CID in the course of the investigations. CID noted raw and unedited footage which was demanded from the journalists uh, was not submitted. Right, uh, lawyer for Charles Bisu Yao Pong has been explaining the content of the leaked report. He spoke with Winston Amwa on Sunrise on our sister station. We have received a report from the police in which they have said that after a thorough investigation, the allegations made and other complaints made concerning Mr. BC in relation to mining in this country have not been confirmed and that he is a free person. He has not engaged in any of the acts that he had been accused or alleged to have engaged in. And in particular, we need to focus on the fact that it was, at least on the police report, the chairman of the 
interministerial committee who actually made the complaint to the police uh, okay. under whom the Mr. BC, I understand, was working. So the complaint by the chairman, what did he complain to the police CID to investigate? The public officer and defrauding by false pretense, contrary to section 293 and 131 of the Criminal Other Offenses Act 1960. Did you have any of your team of lawyers with Mr. Bisu during the interrogation? Yes, but there are matters concerning lawyer-client relationship privileges that we are not permitted to disclose. But the point is that everything that the police found relevant is contained in the report. So I believe if you obtain a copy of the report, or since I believe it's a public document now, you may apply to the police and if they assess it and believe that it's a report that they can give you a copy, that is a decision for the police to take. So what happens to the case before for the special prosecutor. I'm not a lawyer in the case before the special prosecutor, so I cannot speak to it. Why? Uh, right. Uh, investigative uh, body Tiger Eye PI has chastised the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service in its latest report that seeks to exonerate Charles Bisu, the presidential staffer and former secretary to the Interministerial uh, Committee on Illegal Small Scale Mining. According to Tiger Eye PI, the CID has no locus in declaring the suspect Charles Bisu and persons linked to him in the Galamse fraud expose as innocent. Investigative firm Tiger IPI has rubbished reports from the Criminal Investigative Department of the Ghana Police Service, which says it has exonerated Charles Bissu, former secretary of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, of any wrongdoings. The CID said Mr. Bissu and other persons associated with him, who were alleged to have engaged in various acts of corruption, were not found culpable in its investigations. The CID further stated that its investigations primarily relied on the documentary and other sources as already indicated. The CID added Anas Arimeyaw Anas failed to avail himself to assist in investigations and also provide a copy of the unedited version of the documentary. But in a reply from the Tiger IPI, the investigative body said it welcomes the decision of the police to remove itself from the investigations. This is because the involvement of the Ghana Police Service in the said investigation has been nothing but needless duplicitous and superfluous and a total waste of resources. The statement also said, in February 2019, a petition was sent to the Office of the Special Prosecutor just at the same time the documentary was published. Tiger IPI noted that its lawyers deemed the Office of the Special Prosecutor most suitable to investigate this matter, which also involves politically exposed persons. Tiger IPI added it did not send a petition to the Ghana Police Service and it has not participated in any purported investigation by the service. The statement said has conducted itself in this matter as an unhappy, unsolicited busybody with no real substance to inform a decision. The Office of the Special Prosecutor, according to Tiger IPI, is fully seized with the matter and it is still conducting its investigations. And in a related development, the special prosecutor Martin Amido in an interview in Accra-based CTFM argues the Criminal Investigations Department has no jurisdiction to make such conclusions. Uh, let's listen to him now. They petitioned us in February this year. We replied to them the same men to tell them we're going to investigate it. Their petition to us was published in the news media. They chose to publish our reply to them in the news media. We commenced investigation. But before I could invite the suspect, I read a newspaper publication in which Charles Bissou said that the CID was investigating his case and that the complainant should go there and make their evidence. So I wrote to the Director General CID to tell her that the offenses of corruption have been apportioned to the Office of Special Prosecutor. We have been petitioned. We have indicated that we are going to begin investigation. There shouldn't be duplicity of our efforts, so she should stop it. 
All right, uh, let's get on to the telephone lines and uh, speak to a member of the Anti-Corruption Coalition, uh, investigative journalist Manasi Awene Azuri. Uh, Ms. Azuri, uh, it's nice to have you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. My pleasure, Steve. Now, your earlier tweet today that we might one day canonize former President John Mahama uh, kind of speaks to the sins of the current administration compared to what uh, you seem to have witnessed under the Eswa uh, Mahama administration. Is that the thinking behind your tweet? Yes, those of us who are into reporting or advocating against corruption in this country have had uh, some level of disappointment and I have spoken to quite a number of people but for myself I can say I'm highly disappointed mm -hmm. that how this government is approaching the issue of corruption it appears it is paying only lip service but when it comes to the real action we don't see that and we know last week uh, Mr. Martin Amido released a statement saying that there had been some interferences and uh, some government institutions refusing him information and cooperation. My disappointment with that statement was the fact that Martin Amido sought to exonerate the president when the president should be the number one culprit in all of this because the people who are frustrating Martin Amido, the institutions that are not cooperating with him, the heads of those institutions are appointed by the president. So if he said the president had intervened and they were not listening, and the president was sitting down watching them to frustrate his anti-corruption efforts, then you cannot exonerate such a person when you are complaining mm. about acts of corruption. And this matter is actually one of them and i can tell you for a fact that 2017 i did an investigation robbing the assemblies in which over 200 million ghana cities was paid under very shady circumstances to the just one companies and the cid mm. have been investing this case for two years now they complain about the pressure on them and how difficult it is to get resources to even follow these cases. So you wouldn't expect such a body that is already swaying mm -hmm. under heavy weight of pressure to now go out of its way to take up a matter that is already being investigated by another mm -hmm. anti-corruption agency, in this case, the Office of the Special Prosecutor. So this tells you that, well, there's a special interest in this case, for which reason the overburdened CID would want to break his back to take on more load. Mm, but won't you also say that uh, sometimes individuals suspected of corruption cases are long judged in the court of public of opinion, even before they really face any real official uh, system of investigations? Well, that is why we would expect the special prosecutor to be given the chance to do his work. When two bodies are fighting over a single case, it raises suspicions. And in this case, we know one office was petitioned. Mm. And so Anas and his team have been working with the office of the special prosecutor. So why would anybody want to go in there and now try to scuttle that work in a way. My point is if there is a way to vindicate people who are suspected of wrongdoing, then it's just allow the work of the special prosecutor or whichever body is petitioned to complete their work. So that if they are free, if they are cleared, we would be free and they would be free to even walk around and their names would be cleared. But when this begins to happen, now, Matamidu is alleging that there's some kind of political machination yeah. in this case. When this happens and even eventually the person gets cleared, still in the court of public opinion, not many or not everybody would be willing to see their clearance as genuine. Mm.
I can understand. Now, let's uh, go back to the exoneration of Charles Bissou. There are those who say that it is actually a blow in the face of the government's rhetoric about fighting corruption. Is that what you think, too? For me, the fact that he's been accused doesn't mean that he should be found guilty at all costs. Yeah. So it is possible he can be found guilty. It is also possible that he can be exonerated. But the issue here has to do with the processes leading to his exoneration. The CID, in handling some political cases for some time now, has not endeared itself to the general public. Its credibility has been brought to question on a number of issues, especially when they have to do with politically exposed persons. So when the CID is telling us that, okay, somebody petitioned another person and was not prepared to cooperate with them, I think the best thing they could have done was to say, well, since you are cooperating with the special prosecutor, which is also a constitutional body mandated to do corruption investigation, let's concentrate on our cases and allow the special prosecutor to finish its investigation. But if you go on to investigate something without even the full facts, then at the end of the day, they were bound to come to this conclusion. And this conclusion cannot be taken seriously. And by extension, it also pains the government in a very negative light because this is not the first time state institutions have uh, cleared officials that people have suspicions about. We know of the Australian visa scandal. The scandal occurred the BNI was asked to do some investigation. We don't even know the report. But the president came out to say the persons who were named have been cleared. Now we all agree that some money, an example, some money was stolen. We all agree that it was human beings who stole that money. And the human beings at the helm of affairs have all been cleared. So who? really stole that money. So when all of this happens, and then we come out and say the person has been exonerated, the person has been cleared, it leaves so many questions than answers to the very issues people have concerns about. Right. Manase Zuri Awene, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Manase is a member of the Anti-Corruption uh, uh, Coalition of Ghana. I'm Stephen Anti. This is... News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can follow our live stream on Facebook. Catch us live on DSTV Channel 279. We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, President Tekufuado has appointed Deputy Inspector General Police James Opon Bueno as the acting IGP. The Deputy Inspector General uh, takes over from David Asante Pietu, who is proceeding on leave uh, with immediate effect. Uh, James Opon Bueno is taking over from the IGP, who uh, was to retire August 14. James Opon Bueno will hold the fort until a substantive IGP is appointed in accordance with the Constitution. Uh, uh, let's uh, quickly get back to uh, the touch screen and uh, check out uh, the profile. But uh, before we do that, I must give you uh, some facts that on September of 2016, uh, the Police Services Commission uh, uh, appointed the Commissioner of Police, uh, James Opon Bueno, uh, uh, appointed him as uh, the new uh, Deputy Inspector General in relation to a position that has been lying for a while. So let's uh, quickly take a look at his profile. Uh, he's 61. <laughs> he will be 61. He was born in 1950. Eight. Uh, his hometown is from Abuabo number one in the Doma district in the Bonafu region, uh, the Bono region. He joined the police service some 31 years ago after graduating from the police academy in 1992. Uh, then between 95 and 2000, he took several courses on police, uh, policing and management. He worked as a lecturer in criminal law and criminal procedure between 84 and 86 at the Ghana Police Academy. He was also the legal officer for ADB Agricultural Development Bank at the time from 1986 to 1988. And uh, let's take a quick glance through his educational qualifications. He holds a 
master, master's degree in human resources and a bachelor's of law degree. He also has a, a bachelor of arts in law and political science. He was called to the bar of Ghana in eight, 1984. He obviously uh, has the GCO level and A levels, which he secured in 1977 and um, 1979. Right, uh, let's, uh, President Kufuado has directed the Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietro, to proceed on leave ahead of his retirement on August 14. This year, the president has uh, meanwhile asked the Deputy Inspector General, we've told you that already, James Opon Bueno, uh, to serve in an acting capacity until a substantive IGP is appointed. Here's a brief uh, profile of David Asante Pietro, who exits. David Asante Pietro's leave is pending his retirement from the Ghana Police Service on Wednesday 14, 2019. He became IGP on January 25, 2017. Prior to his appointment, David Asante Pietu was the head of the General ICT Department at the police headquarters as well as the head of the Marine Police. He also served as the Director General in charge of research and Director General of the Police CID. David Asante Pietu work outside Ghana include an appointment as Director of the Specialized Crime and Analysis SCA unit at the Interpol headquarters in Lyon, France in 2007. He also worked at the Sarajevo Police Academy, Police Ethics and Criminal Investigations under the United Nations Task Force in Bosnia-Herzegovina from 1997 to 1998. David Asantia Pietu also worked as a homicide investigator under the United Nations mission in Liberia and was a team leader in investigations into the mass murder of more than 50 people in the Gambia. Asantia Pietu pursued a Master of Science degree in Chemistry at the Kharkov State University in Ukraine, graduating in 1985. Upon returning to Ghana, he enrolled at the Ghana Police Academy in Accra from 1988 to 1990, where he graduated with a certificate in police duties. Asante Pietu proceeded to Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, Gimpa, in 1993, where he obtained a certificate in general management. He obtained a certificate in criminal justice administration from the University of Virginia in 2002. In 2011, he enrolled at Gimpa for an Executive Master of Business Administration, graduating in 2013. Now, earlier on News 360, we spoke to uh, fraud and security consultant Richard Kumado about the appointment of the IGP, the acting IGP, uh, Commissioner of Police, James Opombueno. When it comes to appointment of uh, IGP, most time it's not about credibility, it's about political loyalty, and it's about somebody the president is comfortable playing the same team with. It's unfortunate, normally it's about the political maneuverings and political loyalty about, about nationality and about credibility. But if you read the profile of this one, and as PA2 and Madam T1 and Kofi Bwachi, you could see that these are guys who have come to the ranks with a lot of credibility and a lot of people a lot of people have worked with them and they might be able to support them but hey they get to that position how they appointed sometimes create problem for them they are not able to also put that credible teams together and there's much of political interference and most times they refuse to behave as professionals and that is what is happening today here we are talking about the failures of our people who was once a very good police officer with a lot of international reputation and credibility, but they have all failed, and this particular one was also part of our people. And so, for that time, I wouldn't have even loved him to be the IGP, but that is the prerogative of the president. Right, so uh, that was an earlier interview on News 360. That's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thanks very much for your time. On behalf of the crew, good night. There is more news at 3news.com.